Amen. I'm going to call the men up, and uh, they're going to come up, and uh, they're going to tell you, uh, to give you their names, how long they've been with us at Team Challenge. Come on, men. Looks like a football team, darn, going up yeah. there. Yeah. Basketball team or something. Hey, oh, the greatest, yeah. greatest people in the world. Oh, God's right team. God's redeemed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. but where they're from and uh, how long they've been with us and their age. Amen? Amen. We're not Amen. worried about our age. Amen? <laughs> Amen. We'll, we'll begin with uh, uh, Brandon right here. Amen? God bless you, Brandon. Uh, my name is Brandon Johnson. I'm 27 from Flint, Michigan. And I just passed two months in the program. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I'm Steven Strong. I'm from Trenton, Michigan. One, one month in the program, and I'm 33 years old. My name is George Fordyce. I'm from Livingston, Tennessee. I'm 23 years old, and I've been in Teen Challenge for four and a half months. My name is Joel Granberry. I'm 22 years old. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. I've been in the program for about a month and a half. I'm from Holland, Michigan, 38 years old, and I've been here just shy of two months. Wow. My name is Steve Legrand. I'm 46 years old from Baltimore, Michigan, and I've been in the program for five and a half months. All right. My name is Molly Kisserwan from Gearman, Michigan. I've been in the program just about four and a half months. All right.
my parents can sleep at night. <laughs> I am praising the Lord. My wife is eight months in the Women's Center right now. Oh, wow. Amen. So Amen. 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 Um, I'm Steven again. Like Brandon um, here and a lot of the guys, actually, I was raised in a good Christian home. You know, my parents loved me and they raised me in the truth. Um, when I was young in church and youth group, I had a relationship with God, but, um, you know, I didn't focus on it and I fell away in the world during uh, high school as well and started using marijuana and alcohol and, you know, that led to, in my 20s, I got introduced to prescription painkillers and did those for about eight years. Um, at, by, the, by the fifth year into it, I was doing any kind of prescription drug imaginable, any kind of, you know, Xanax, Oxycontin, um, Adderall, anything. Um, doing that for eight years uh, led to my wife divorcing me. Um, and in that time, I became like extremely depressed, more than I'd ever been before. And um, mm. my cousin had started selling crystal meth, and I got I got hooked on that. And I did that for like six months. Completely lost my mind. Um, I was. I was almost dead. I mean, I, I, was, I would have died out there, staying up for days at a time. But um, one day, I had been out for like nine days, and something told me to go to my parents' house. I don't know if it was, I'm pretty sure it was God. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I don't know how I made it, but I got in my car and I drove to my parents' house. I'm sure I swerved all over the place, but. And they had heard about uh, Western Michigan Teen Challenge from Pastor Dave Pace at their church, and they brought me here. and. Um, Wow. You know, it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. And, Amen. You know, Jesus, Amen. Jesus has, you know, he's forgiven me for all that. Yeah. You know, he's, right. he's renewed me. Um, you know, I'm saved. And, yeah, and I have a peace yeah. in my heart that Amen. surpasses all understanding. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't trade it for the world. You know, right. I miss right. my ex-wife and all my house and everything I lost. But it, it's it's nothing compared to Jesus.
the role model of having Christ as uh, yeah, you know, there you go. the center point of your life. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, I've made everything else the focal point of my life before coming to God. So you know, I mean, it, it, I can't say it'll be easy, but it's it's a lot easier than I ever thought it would be to make God the center point of my life now. Amen. And I just finally, I know the feeling that I felt when I was 13. I felt Christ in me when I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. And now I know what that feeling is because I have that again. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And this is just. Thank you all so much for having us. And this is just a blessing and an opportunity to be here. And I thank you all for listening to my testimony. My name is Jovan Granberry. Once again, I'm from Saginaw. Um, not too far away from here. Um, I would just like these guys to grow up in a good uh, God-fearing uh, God parents, loving Christian home. Um, Went to church all my life. Uh, my parents made me go to church, um, you know, just because they, they love me. You know. But um, right, right. made me get involved in church, and I was just like, you know, as a young, you know, young kid, I didn't understand the importance of it, because you know, I'm like, it's religion, you know, I don't, you know, all this religion, I'm, not, you know, I don't like it, you know. And, you're, and when you're forced into something, you can kind of rebel. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, right. But you know, I didn't have a relationship with Christ. I already always knew who He was. You know, but, you know, I didn't have that relationship and connection. Um, so, needless to say, I rebelled, um, started hanging out with the wrong people, um, and my best friend died when I was 14. That's when I got um, got involved in prescription painkillers, um, and it self-medicated and numbed myself to deal with the pain. And ever since then, it just spiraled downhill, started taking more and more, um, and then when I was in my senior year of high school, um, I got kicked out and uh, arrested for selling Oxycontin. Um, and from then on, lost jobs, just downhill. Lost jobs, countless jobs, went to jail numerous times, rehabs. Um, nothing worked. I hit a various uh, amount of bottoms. And, you know, I almost could have, could have lost myself, uh, lost my life many times. And nothing was enough. Um, and then it just got worse, started doing. Uh, harder drugs, ecstasy, cocaine, just started taking more opiates. Um, and it just got worse and worse. Um, and it wasn't until this last couple of years, um, it just got to the worst it's ever been. Um, and this last year, I od twice. Um, this last time, I almost didn't make it. Had me on a ventilator um, because my heartbeat got to like 200 beats per minute. And my liver started, and liver and kidney started shutting down. They didn't think I was going to make it, and um, by the grace of God, I'm still here. Um, I was actually supposed to come and teach challenge before that happened, and I said no because, you know, I was like, I'm not going to go away for 13 months. And my dad was like, either do that or you get out. And I was like, yeah, I'll go to Dallas with my cousin. I was actually supposed to go to Dallas that night before I OD, but. Obviously, I knew I knew that something had to change or I wasn't going to be here. Yeah. Um, so, came to Team Challenge, you know, finally humbled myself and um, I came to Christ, man. And um, ever since, uh, I just had to make a decision because I knew it wasn't going to be it wasn't going to be around long if I didn't. He knew he had to drag me by my neck uh, to him in order to save my life. Um, All right. So, it's, ever since then, it's just been. Um, an experience. Um, I, I have a connection with Christ, and that emptiness I felt when I was out there, I was trying to fill myself with, uh, I mean, trying there to be content. Go. I have it's being I'm being yeah. filled with Christ every day. All right. And um, awesome. just like Matthew, um, it says in Matthew, I forgot the exact verse and chapter, but if you, if you want um, if he wants to be my disciple, he must deny himself and take up his cross, cross and follow me. And that's what I'm doing today. So I just, I just thank him for uh, what he's, what he's doing in my life today. And thank you for uh, letting me share my testimony. Yeah. Well, once again, uh, my name is Troy I'm from Holland, Michigan. Um, first, I want to say I didn't know what to expect coming in here today. <laughs> I didn't. I have to be honest. Nobody does. I really appreciate this experience. This has been beautiful. Yeah. It's been moving. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, my story starts very similar. I had 
good parents. And we go into church. And we do it all the, the right things. But I never did have a relationship with God. I never did. And uh, when I was a, a teenager, I started to experiment with drugs and alcohol. And uh, that went on for a few years, and I thought I got a grip on things. And I just stopped. In my early 20s, I you know, held good jobs, and I was doing the, the right thing according to the world's eyes. But uh, in, in my early 30s, I, had, I, I suffered several losses in my family, and one of which was my father. He was very close to me, and uh, that void that was never filled in my life by the Lord showed itself very, very clear, and uh, I filled it with alcohol, and I, I filled it immensely with alcohol, wow. and uh, I just spiraled down really hard and really fast, and uh, I ended up becoming a cheat, and a liar, and a liar to cover up all the cheating, and the drinking, oh, and all the sin. It was consuming my life, and I just, I, I was out of control. And uh, I, I hit my absolute bottom, and I, I, I called out to a friend of mine, who uh, I've always admired for his uh, together lifestyle, I'll put it. It was just that he always had a calm and a peace about him. There you go. And he listened to me for a while, rambling, and he just, uh, he asked me a clear question. He said, uh, what is it that you want? And I said, I just want to be free from all this chaos Amen. and all this darkness Amen. and all these lies and all the just the, the, the just disgusting life that I was part of. And uh, he said, well, it's, it's pretty simple. You need God in your life. And you need Him as your everything. Yeah, there you go. And well, uh, a few phone calls later by him, and fast forward now almost two months, I'm standing in front of you guys. <laughs> I woke up this morning guilt-free, shame-free, happy that I have the Lord in my life. Awesome. And I'm excited for what's next. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. in my life back then thought it would be kind of funny to let a little boy taste alcohol and take a sip of beer here and a sip of beer there and unfortunately they sealed my fate because I liked it and I liked it a lot. Wow. And by the time I was uh, 15 years old, I was a full-blown alcoholic. Oh, my. Um, and that's when the chaos really began. Um, there was some good times going through the, life of the next 30 years after that, but a lot of them were bad. But the one good thing that happened when I was young, that seed of God, was planted in my heart. Good. Whenever right. thing would get bad, I would cry out. And that's when the good parts of my life would, that did happen, that good stuff that did come about through all that chaos. God would pick me up and pull me out of that mess. And uh, whenever we get to the point where I would have a, have a control of it again, I'd be like, I don't need you anymore, God. I got this. I'll see you next time. And, uh, Boy, I'm sure glad we got a God that's faithful. Amen. There you go, boy. And I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that he's a God of not one more chance, but uh, just constant chances, you know. We didn't, not just a second chance. Thank you, Lord. When it got real bad finally here back in November, um, I was uh, facing charges of my third drunk driving. Um, just got divorced for the third time. And I'm laying in a hotel room up in Ludington, Michigan, wanting to die. I figured my life was pretty much toast. All right. Um, the, you know, I was a truck driver and a bus mechanic by trade. Um, I can't do that anymore because uh, of the drunk drivings. So as I'm laying there praying that God would just take me or let me do it myself, something that uh, Pastor Sam had said to me uh, 
about seven years ago when I was a Teen Challenge one other time that I uh, needed God's help and I went through the program for a little while and I didn't need him anymore so I left. But Pastor Sam told me back then, you know, that uh, God is a God of completion. That yeah. once he starts a work in you, he wants yeah. you to finish it. That's right. That's right. And uh, so as I'm laying there crying and just not knowing what to do, that come to my mind. So I call Pastor Sam. And, you know, out of all the men that he probably meets and ladies he meets a year, um, you know, over a course of seven years, that's quite a few people. Yeah. He remembered me. Awesome. And uh, I told him the situation. He said, you need to come back. And he put me on hold for a minute. Went to go talk to the director, and the next thing I know, he's telling me to pack my bags and, and come home. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there again, I cried out to God. God pulled me back out of it. But this go. time, I'm letting him have it because I don't want it back. Today I don't want to die. I don't think about dying, and uh, I, I thank God every day for another day. Yeah. You know, I get another day that I can get up and just praise His name. Get another day that I can be with be with the chef. All right. And, uh, these fellows, I mean, I just love them all. And uh, you know, my life to now, my life today, you know, it ain't about truck driving or bus mechanic in or whatever the world wants it to be. It's about serving God and just, uh, there you just go. being there for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You guys thank God and Hello, hello everybody here. Um, well, again, my name is Holly. Um, the only difference, I'm just like these guys here, the only difference I was, didn't know Jesus at all, I was born in Beirut, Lebanon. Um, by the age of five, my father died. Um, I remember him taking him, burying him with my family. He was shot up and killed. Was the first casualty of the civil war. I ended up being in orphan school for many years. Mm. But my mom from Saudi Arabia, her family uh, contacted her, and she pulled me and my sister out of the orphan school and took us to Saudi Arabia. We lived there for about three years, and uh, half that time I was in Mecca. Was studied there at the Islamic religion, and uh, went back to Lebanon. Um, it was still war, and um, I know the United States was a great country to come to, and I, right before 18 years old, I came here to the United States, the land of the opportunity, the land of the free, and it really was a great time, and I uh, became a very successful businessman, had a wonderful family, great business, a lot of stuff. Um, the second I touched drugs, and it was someone offered it to me, and I didn't want to be different, I tried it, I was hooked, and uh, I didn't know that I was hooked at the time. Um, back in the 1700s, Samuel Jackson says, the chains of addictions are generally too small to be felt until they are too large to be broken. Wow, oh, yeah. wow. And uh, okay. that was 300 Good years work. ago. Well, right. um, by age of 35, I realized, whoa, well, I got a problem, I need to stop. <coughs> so I. I went to back to Mecca, that's what I know what to do. I went did my third pilgrimage and uh, visited the Holy Land and prayed and did all I can, came back. Shortly after, went back to my old ways, tried everything, couldn't stop, went to secular rehab in all three. Told him once an addict, all was an addict, and hey, don't worry about it, your insurance will pay the bill. Uh, well, um kind uh, of fast forward and 2008, um, I was doing drugs for about nine days also. I don't know what number nine is, but um, I didn't want to live no more. I couldn't do this no more. And uh, I had a lot of drugs, and uh, I decided I'm just going to take it all and just end my life. I'll do everybody a favor like that. And uh, right before I did that, TV came on, and Dr. Charles Stanley came on TV. And wow. He said, Obey God and leave all the consequences to him. Well, I don't know what else he says, but in that hour, got to talking to me, and um, I got up and threw all my drugs down the toilet and went home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got home, my mom and wife, they thought 
thought I was dead, and then he hugged me and kissed me, and I said, Allah Muhammad didn't come to save me when I went to die, but Jesus did. <laughs> Their answer was, that's what happens when you do drugs, you lose your mind. Oh, look out, look out. Well, in 09, things got worse, much worse, because that's all I knew about Jesus. He saved me, but I didn't know anymore. Well, things got worse, and wife and problem, business, and all that got down. I went and took 30 sleeping pills and went in the car and parked a lot at Walmart. Just went to die, and uh, woke up. Still there, and got on the 33 pink pills in the garage, started my car, and closed the door. I woke up still there, heavy dead, because it ran out of gas, and the pills didn't work. Amen, God! So I got out from there and uh, went to my old house and wanted to hang myself. I figured, you know, um, because my wife left at the time, just let her know, look, I don't want to live, and she'll remember me dead in that house. And as I'm trying to hang myself there, the cops broke the door. I never called them. My cousin said I had a bad feeling and I called them. I ended up at a crazy people's hospital for a week. When I got out wow. from there, they gave me a lot of... I had problems sleeping, so they gave me 30 pills of Ambien, 20 milligram. They gave me 30 pills of Circle, 300 milligram, 90 pills of Depakoth, and I bought a bunch more. I went to my basement, wrote a little note, mistake is all I am, but mistake I didn't want to be, and took them all. At that time, I did feel the death coming, and the only thing I said, I don't want to go to hell, but I knew who I was crying to, though. The only one that saved me in all ways. Well, I woke up from it three days later. Amen. I knew my knees, and raised my hands in the air. Keep in mind, Muslim, don't pray that way. And I said, it is you that keep on saving me. You lead up all the way. She had that garbage bag when you tilted it over, one paper fell out of it, and it was Western Michigan Teen Challenge. Oh, man. Oh, and you know where that paper came from? She searched in and after the best place to beat the addiction. And when she found out it's a Christian fellowship program, she threw it in the garbage. But God's timing was perfect. That yes. was a year before yeah. she found out. God's timing was perfect. He needed for me to be totally broken. Yeah. Yes. To come. Oh. You know, before oh, wow. we have limited time, I could talk forever about the Lord, but before I end, I have two things, two praise reports to say. I came to Teen Challenge. Pastor Sam baptized me. My name today is Ali Christian because my yeah. name is written in heaven and God saved me. Yeah. There yeah. 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 second thing yes. 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 on August 16, my mom came to visit me after my birthday. And she seemed a changed man, and I told her what the program, how working with me, but she's seen it. I didn't have to say much. My friend drove 14 hours to bring her to see me. He lives three hours away. He went to Dearborn, picked her up, brought her back, then he took her back. 14 hours he drove. On the way home, she says, thank God, my son is better. Thank God, thank God. Then she looked at him and she says, and thank Jesus. Yeah. 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 Verses Job 5 17. Blessed is the man whom God's correct, but let him not despise the discipline of the Almighty. Amen. In Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper, wow. not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Amen.
Hey, man, I like that. Give us something. <laughs> you know we're going to get something. Hey, man, give them some meat potatoes. <laughs> I like my medium, bro. <laughs> I love churches that want to hear the word. Yeah. Wow. Yes. We go to a lot of churches. Yeah. Love the word. Uh, yeah, amen. But uh, I had on my heart here, uh, Christ is a living word. Amen. And uh, here in uh, in Colossians chapter one, this is really on my heart here. Uh, you know, thirteen and fourteen tells us uh, that Christ is the deliverer. Uh, I only like that word deliver. Amen. It means to rescue and to draw to oneself. Uh, you know, a lot of the words in the Bible, they have, uh, uh, different shades of meaning. And, uh, he, uh, verse 13, for he delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And, uh, he has uh, drawn us to himself and he has delivered us, amen, amen. Uh, from uh, that domain of darkness and transferred us amen. into the kingdom of the son of his love. Uh, and we're uh, part of uh, the kingdom in which Jesus rules now, the kingdom of light, amen. Uh, and, uh, but... Uh, uh, in whom, verse 14 says, in whom we have redemption, uh, the forgiveness of sins. And uh, verse uh, 20 says, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. That was that blood he shed. A price was paid for our redemption. Atonement was made. Amen? Amen. And, uh, that satisfying sacrifice, that sacrifice that satisfied a holy God. Right. Amen. And uh, we are fully accepted. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Uh, and verse 22 tells us that uh, we, uh, uh, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body uh, through death, through the cross, in order to present you before him, holy and blameless. And now... We stand accepted by God and we are acceptable to Him. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. We, we uh, stand before Him right now, uh, before Him holy and blameless. And we're fully accepted by Him and we need to know that. Yes. Uh, you may be having a bad day, but you are in Christ and the blood covers your life. And you're acceptable to Him right now. Don't care about how many mistakes you made. You're in Christ. You know, to walk away from Christ and to live in sin, that's a whole other thing. We're not talking about that. We're talking about sincere brothers and sisters in Christ who were walk, trying our best to walk with the Lord. Amen. And He's right there with His grace helping us as we're trying our best. Amen. But thank God we're not on a, tr a treadmill of works. We're fully accepted. And we're acceptable to Him, accepted into His presence. And when He sees us, we're acceptable to Him. It's very important. Into His presence. And when He sees you, you're acceptable. He sees us through the cross. He sees us covered with the blood. As if we never sinned. Justification. Justified. Just as if we never sinned. Now that, uh, you know, that's one of the great doctrines. And Pastor Keith could teach on it. You've probably heard it. But just in short, that's a good way to believe it. Amen? Praise God. And uh, thank the Lord. But I wanted to just focus here a little more on these next verses. So we've been delivered. And, uh, and then he says, uh, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Yeah. In other words, the preeminent one yeah. in all creation. Amen? 
He's not one among many. Uh, you know, he is preeminent. Yeah. His supremacy. Amen? Yeah. As creator. Hallelujah. Uh, and it goes on uh, to say, For by him all things were created. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him. This is Christ. And for Him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we're talking about the deity of the Son of God. Yep. You got to get it straight who Jesus is. Right. Right. A lot of people talk about God today, but how do you know yep. God? You Jesus go. is the only one that can define God to this world. Yep. Jesus Christ. Yep. He's the only one. You cannot know God without the Son, yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now live by Him and for Him. How about yes. that? Yes. True power. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm. And this is who we're serving today. Thank you, Lord. And this is who paid the price for us. Yes. Oh, boy. Wow. Well, that's, that's just... Uh, and we need to lift up Christ. Amen. Worthy. Hallelujah. And, uh, and we... Uh, and, and, and verse 17, and he is, not was, it's a key yeah. word, he is before all things, and in him all things, the King James says, consists, and it means held together. Yes. In Jesus, all things are held together. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. This universe. Yes. Wow. Every atom. Hallelujah. Yes. And I was talking to a scientist from Princeton, New Jersey, where my home church is from, and he said, we don't know the, uh, the you know, what makes up an atom, the, what's it, the, the protons or whatever yeah. they are. He says, we still don't know what keeps that atom together. That's either. right. Absolutely. Yep. Man can't and then he out. pointed to this, yeah. this That's verse. Right. That's he right. says, but we, we know. <laughs> He holds all things together. Amen. All right. Right. Yeah, we serve right there. You know, we're told that our earth is, is held in its uh, Glory. Uh, orbit. Christ. What is it? And uh, ro ro uh, orbit and, and is rotating. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how lot we're spinning and going around. But we're held right there. Yeah. And it's on its axis, right? Yeah. The earth's yeah. tilted. So the seasons come and go. We're right on time. Yeah. And that earth is kept right there yeah. for thousands of years. Just yeah. kept right there. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Boy, that'll give you an excedrin headache. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is good, but it's true. We know it's true because the Bible tells us so. The Word of God declares it. Yeah. Yeah. Notice that, and he is, not was. It's a key word. Yes. When you read the Bible, mm. get it, get it straight, get it right. Yes. Don't twist anything. Read it correctly. Yes. All right, all right. And he okay. is before all things. Hallelujah. Not was. All right. And there we see. His deity or His timeless nature there. Uh, his timeless deity. Uh, Jesus is the one that said, Before Abraham was, yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John 8. There you go. And uh, I see that you're all with God here. You're all with the Word. So we're, let's just uh, look at that for a minute here. Yeah, John 8, 58. Oh, it's getting better in here. Up, we got somebody. Oh, feeling it. Yeah, feel it. Are you feeling it? Oh, yeah. feel it. We feel it, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. oh hallelujah. Oh, How can you go wrong when you lift up Jesus? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. How are you doing?
No, I, I was waiting to see the Catholic boy uh, last night, on the, and he told me I'm, I'm Catholic. And I says, Catholics love Jesus. All right, all right. I says, you can love up. him. You can know him personally. That's straight up. Yeah. And I told him it's not a matter of being a member of a church. I says, it's a matter of knowing Jesus personally. Yeah. That's straight right. up, brother. And I says, it's called the rebirth. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Or being born again. Yeah. Or Catholics call it conversion. Yeah. It's all right. If you're going to talk to a Catholic user, that's better. Yeah. 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 Convert. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the first time my cell phone ever went out. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. I'm not here. Yeah, I don't have to worry here. Amen. What's that? I got hit last Sunday, bro. Does it? Oh, good. Good. I know I'll be invited back. Amen. I'll invite myself back. Is that all right? That's all right. I don't mean to be rude. That's our bad anyways. We didn't make the announcement to turn your cell phones off, so you're, you're covered, brother. Amen. But uh, hey, look at uh, John there, John 5. Uh, I guess we are getting fed here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. 517. Let's see. You know, uh, Jesus healed this man on the Sabbath. Uh, verse 15, the man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. And for this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. Uh, how many know he's the Lord of the Sabbath? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. We weren't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for us yeah. to give us a day of rest. Amen. Amen. Praise right, God. Right. Amen. Verse 17. But he answered them, My father is working until now, and I myself am working. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, therefore, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because he was making himself equal with the Father. Yes. Now go to John 10, 17, okay. 18. Easy to remember. 5, 17, and then 10, 17, and 18. All right. uh, both in John. You with me? We're with you. John 10, 17. For this reason the Father loves me. Why? Because I lay down my life that I may take it again. All right. Hallelujah. Take it up again. 18. In, clay, in case somebody didn't fully understand, <laughs> Jesus kind of repeats, amen? Amen. And drives it home. Yeah. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative, and I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. Yeah. This yeah. commandment I received from my Father. Amen. Yeah. 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 Nobody could say that Jesus was disconnected ever from his father. That's right. That's right. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Tell it, brother. Amen. They're equal. <laughs> Part of the Godhead. Yep. You'll never separate them. Yes. Because we worship one God. Yes, you're right. You're right. Three persons in the Godhead. All right. All right. Oh, praise God. Yep. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And so back in back in Colossians there, one seventeen. And I just want to kind of bring this to a close, but kind of uh Long home, amen? amen. He is before all things. Mm -hmm. this. So we saw that Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am. I didn't read that, did we? Let me read that again. John.
John 8. Sorry about that. It's all right. It's all right. Praise you, Lord. Yes. Amen. And John 8 there, uh, 54, we read, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, yeah. of whom you say, He is our God. And you have not come to know Him, but I know Him. And if I say that I do not know Him, I shall be a liar like you. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah. boy. But I do know Him and keep His word. Yes. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Yes. The yeah. Jews therefore said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? <laughs> Jesus said to them, Truly, truly I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Yes. There's, there's a few I am statements. Yes. Yeah. That I Right? Yeah. He says, Moses, you tell him that I am, that I am sent you. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. That's it. And uh, and so, boy, he claimed deity there. Amen. Uh, 59. And uh, that was uh, cause for the Jews to stone him to death uh, for blasphemy, uh, claiming deity, claiming to be equal with God. Uh -oh. And uh, that's just what they did. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Jesus didn't claim to be God. Yeah. For our Jehovah's Witness friends. Yeah. You just let them know that. Amen? Yeah. Right. I'm going to show you another one to let them know. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. But here in 59, therefore they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. They knew they could have they could have stoned him for blaspheming, claiming yeah. to be God. Right. Out. Hallelujah. But back in John 5, hallelujah. And here's the problem with our Jehovah's Witness friends. Yeah. Bless their hearts, they need to hear the truth. Yeah. That's right. right. Amen. Don't ever be afraid of them. You gotta show them who Jesus is. That's That's right. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. That's the key. Amen? That's the key. Uh, here, 539. Uh, 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 you search the scriptures because you think that in them, and he was talking there to the Jews. Amen? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is these that bear witness of me. The right. scriptures bear witness of him. We're hearing it today. Yeah. Hey, verse 40. And you are unwilling to come to me that you may have life. All right. There you go. They search the scriptures, but the scriptures speak of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, they do. Hallelujah. And, and we know what he told Timothy. Uh, look at 2 Timothy 3. Uh, was it 14 and 15 there? Praise God. Praise God. I, I, didn't, uh, uh, I didn't plan on going this way, but this is good. Huh? Yeah, good. Praise God. You're, you're wonderful. Boy, I like to be amongst hungry people for God. Amen? Praise God, our men. You see why our men are doing good? They're, they're taking notes. They're, they're, they're hungry for the Word. They want to live. That's right. And we all are. Amen? Praise God. Look at the uh, 2 Timothy 3, 13 uh, and following here. But evil men and imposters will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, in the last days, there will be a deterioration of good sound doctrine. Amen? Amen? And that's what he was talking about yes. in, in verse 1. Realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Amen? And he describes uh, people in the last days. Amen? For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, and boastful, and on. Amen? Amen. Uh, but uh, in 13, evil men and imposters will proceed from yeah. bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived, and they'll both fall into the ditch. 
That's no. right. No. No. How about that? You know, Jesus said that in Luke 6. But look at this here. Amen? Praise God. Uh, uh, Luke 6 there. Uh, not in plan on this, but this is good. It's good. Hallelujah. Look at this. Hallelujah. And he says here uh, in verse uh, 39. And he also spoke, Luke 6, 39. He also spoke the parable to them. Uh, a blind man cannot guide a blind man, can he? They will both fall into a pit or a ditch. Verse 40. A pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone after he has been fully trained will be like his teacher. All right. All right. And you got to be careful who you listen to. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. There you go, bro. Uh, that, true. <laughs> and uh, back in Timothy here, uh, 2 Timothy 3.14, he's talking to his son, uh, Timothy, in the faith. Amen. Yeah. He yeah. says, you, however, continue in the things you have learned. Know that and become convinced of knowing from whom you've learned them. From me, Paul, and your mother, uh, and your grandmother, your mother Lois, and your what? Your grandmother Eunice, I think. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget who you learned it from. It's important for us to know who, who we grew up with, our parents, and the faith of our parents, and their lives. Amen. And uh, uh, he says, uh, and uh, verse 15, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings. Of, now, no, look at this. You have known the sacred writings, Timothy, from childhood, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Yes. It's Jesus of the scriptures that you must meet. Yes. All right. You can All right. Study, you can search the scriptures all you want and not be saved. You have to meet the Christ of the scriptures.
here in verse 2, For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betrothed you to one husband, that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. There you go. Isn't that tremendous? Verse 3, But I am afraid, lest as the serpent, referring back to the garden, yeah. there, let, uh, but I am afraid, lest as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, okay. your mind should be led astray. And that's where Satan first approaches you and I. It's in our mind. Yes. It's where, what he did with Eve. Yep. That's right. That your minds would be led astray. That's right. Uh -oh. And we, we, yeah. need to, we, we need to we need to not let him just lie to us and, and, right. and affect yeah. our thinking. Yes, and that. Right on, bro. Mm. Mm. You're right there. He's crafty. Yes, he is. He begins even before anybody can see anything going on. You, he's lying to your mind. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's where he did it with Eve, mm. right there. Come on. And, and if you don't believe it or understand it, let me read it to you again. As Man. Eve, as the serpent deceived Eve, your mind should be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. We just need to understand and know who Jesus is. That's right. Simple, single-hearted devotion to Amen. Christ. Hallelujah. Right. And I like how you lift up Jesus here. Yeah. I love yeah. that, Pastor yeah. Keith. Yeah. Verse 4. Hey, look at this, verse 4. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, so the Corinthians were facing it. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, and if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel. How about that? Oh, you didn't know there was another Jesus, huh? huh? People can use the name Jesus. Oh, yeah. But pin down, ask him, who do you say Jesus is? Yeah, there you go. Define yes. yeah. what you believe. There you go. Define your terms. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He's not just a prophet. No, no, no. no. A great teacher. Yeah. He is preeminent in all yes. of He's not one of many great teachers. He is the only way to heaven. Amen. The way, the truth, and the life. One man, one life, one person. That's it. Hallelujah. Thank you. No wonder. You know, when we're on the streets witnessing Pastor Keith and all of us, and we say the name Jesus, and the environment right around us uh, changes. Yeah, oh, that's it. You're right. You can feel it. Oh, yeah. Oh, shift. Yeah, yeah shift. Come Many on, times, the immediate, is that the right word, environment? Or? Yeah, that's good. We feel you, bro. You feel the power. Yeah. Oh, amen. Then they know exactly what you're about. Yeah. When you say Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. And then he is my Lord and Savior. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. And he cares about you and he shed his blood. And you can have a new life. Yeah. Some yeah. drug addict, some prostitute on the streets. When Come we on. tell them that, you can see something. Yeah. And listen. And they see what we're about. And they know we're real. Amen. We're sincere. Amen, but to, uh, you have not received or a different gospel which you have not accepted. Mm. And you bear this beautifully. Mm. So the Corinthians were uh, were holding up to that and they weren't deceived. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. But uh, boy, yep. Uh, over in Colossians here, 117. And he is before all things. Yes. Amen. And uh, he was before please, Abraham, please and uh, at the present moment right now, he is what he always has been, mm. and he will never change. Thank you. Amen. Isn't Thank that you. wonderful? Amen. He is what he always has been, and he will never change. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. And uh, one more thing. Not only did the Lord Jesus exist before there was any creation <laughs> as the creator. Amen? Christ is also the sustainer of the universe. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Awesome. And he is, sustains its perpetual motion. Our world is, is moving. You know that. Yeah. Uh, every 
everything's always what they say in flux changing. Yeah, yeah. But he changes oh. not. That's right. Yeah. And he has our life. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. And I'll end with uh, Hebrews here. Uh, one. Hebrews 1. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Or, uh, Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. When you're there, I'll read it. Say amen. amen. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways... Listen to this, verse 2. In these last days. How many know we're in the last days? Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt about that, huh? Yeah. In these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Amen? Amen. So the last word we'll hear is in Jesus. He is the final word to this world. Yes. That's right. Didn't it say, yeah. God spoke long ago to the fathers and, the, and many through the prophets in many portions and in many ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us in his son, the final word, all right. the yeah. one whom the prophets all spoke of. Thank you. He is the fulfillment of all things. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen brother. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said he began all gospel preaching. And he says, uh, the, uh, he says, the time has arrived. Amen? Amen. Repent and believe yep. the gospel. Yep. There you go. There the kingdom is. of God, he says, yep. has yep. arrived. Yep. I am here. I begin the kingdom of God begins with me, yep. and it will end with me. Oh, yes. Amen. Mark 1. 13, 14 and 15. Yeah, the amen. kingdom of God has arrived. I am here. Repent and believe the gospel. Yep. Yeah. I am the good news. I preach the good news. Uh -huh. yeah. And he's given us the right to go. preach him. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Isn't that wonderful? Beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. He came the first time, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. That's what he says. The kingdom of God has arrived. I'm here. Yeah. The gospel begins with me and ends with me, but the yep. kingdom yep. will end with Jesus. Yeah. And that he's coming back again. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Yes. Your redemption draws nigh. Revelations, we hear him speaking. Yes. He's the Alpha and Omega. Yeah. The beginning and the end. Great idea. And I say to him. Was it 43.11? I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Yep. That's right. That's it. That's it. One Savior. That's, it. That's God and His Son, Jesus. Yep. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no Savior. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. There is no Today in the city of David, Luke 2.11. Today in the city of David is born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord, yeah. Yahweh, uh, that's it. uppercase, brother. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Jehovah God said that. Yeah. Yes. 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 And here's a Savior in Luke. There is no one. You know the Bible only speaks of one Savior. Yeah. That's it. Bible doesn't speak of one. There can't be two firsts and two lasts. Alpha and Omega. <laughs> the first and the by virtue of the meaning of all that. There cannot be two firsts and two lasts. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. One one. Believe it. Hallelujah. That is good, huh, brother? That's good. Praise God. I'll second that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then uh uh, Hebrews uh, 1 3 here, the next verse, and he is the radiance 
of all so through whom he made the world. This is Jesus. So he is the rightful ruler of his world. Amen. Amen, bro. In verse 3, he is the radiance of his glory, the exact representation of his nature, and upholds. Here as I told you, he's <laughs> Savior and he is sustainer. Amen? Amen. He's creator and sustainer. Look at this. Mm. Uh, the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had when he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Yes. But he upholds, he holds all things. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus will, he is sustaining this universe and he'll sustain your life today. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And uh, his word has been good to us. Rich. Amen. I love you. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, that's where he went. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's good stuff. 